Hola estimados seguidores. Greetings drone enthusiasts. Today we're going to show you how the DJI Fly app works on a Motorola One Zoom device. Uh, just be aware that if you find this app on your app store, it means that your Google phone or your Android phone is compatible. When you're going to fly for the first time outdoors, make sure you turn on the uh, airport mode just to be on the safe end and also location. And this is to avoid any interruptions on the DJI flight from a co phone call or something that might make the app crash and you will lose control of your Mavic Mini. Now, you do need to have a connection in order to access the tutorials. So you can have it uh, set up your data before you're doing your first flight just to sh fly check out the tutorials. It's on the uppermost right hand corner where it says Mavic Mini. You click on it. Let me just turn on the Wi Fi to get access to it. Uh, you will find some video tutorials that are very useful if you're flying this drone for the first time. Remember that this drone is aimed to the consumer that has never flown a drone before, so it's very simple to use. You will find a lot of the function tutorials, uh, tips, flight safety, and so on. It tells you about the many modes the drone has. Also, the first time that you do fly your drone, it will give you like a really quick uh, intro tutorial that you will be trying out your drone while you're flying and it tells you how you to turn it to the right, to the left, raise or lower your altitude and all of that stuff. But that's the first time that you actually fly your drone. Now as you can see the screen is very simple. We have set up the histogram on the right hand and you will see the mode and that tells you the mode that the drone has. It has three modes which are sport, scene mode and position. The position keeps it fixed. The sport is for actually getting the drone to fly faster and the uh, cinematograph is for making smoother videos and pictures, so it do, does flow a little bit slower. It's also telling us that we do need to make compass calibration. This right here, the screen where you touch, is the histogram, and we're trying to show you why it's, it's useful. It tells you how the white balance is taking place. You see those black stripes? We do have the white balance warning enabled. It is telling us, for example, that there's too much white light on the drone right now, but if we do change the configuration and we go out to the hallway where it's a little bit darker, you will notice that the lens opens a little bit more but the white light decreases but if we turn back you get all this warning that white balance auto adjustment can be annoying if you're flying your drone during dusk or evening because it makes transitions and the video loses smoothness so what you want to do is set those values manually in order to avoid those issues and you click right here in the lowermost right hand corner and you will find for instance the photo you can play with the exposure value and also you will see there's an AE which is a lock once you click it it will lock that value the exposure value for the camera right now we have the settings to auto but you can change it to manually as you can see we lower the exposure value and it's pretty much standard now we chose to manual you can play with the ISO the shorter and also uh, the MM value which I have to figure out what it means I think that's the manual mode exposure value. So back to auto. On the video, it's different. You cannot adjust it. It only allows you to adjust the exposure value, the frame per second, and also the resolution of the video. If it's a 2.7K or 1080 pixels, but you cannot change the, the settings of the video camera for some reason. I think it's just something that DJI made default on this drone. If you try, it will not allow you to, so we will just show you the settings. You can film on 60 frames per second if you want a smoother video, but 30 second, 30 frames per second is okay. And we use a 2.7K, remember the files will be bigger, so you do need to have a bigger SD card. We're running on a 64 gigabytes SD card. And also you notice there where we clicked, there's the quick shots, but since we're indoors, it will not allow us to. This little button here is for the takeoff. You keep pressing it, after a few seconds it will raise your drone one meter from the floor and that's how you start it. You can do it either using the app or the controllers which will show you. Quick shots as we said they are not available. We have to be outdoors and you do have to have a GPS lock for them to work because those are for the helix and the drones. If you click on the battery icon you will find the temperature and the flight time that you've been running and right beside it you will see a chronometer which we're not find right now but if you're flying it will tell you how much time is left and right beside it is the settings options 
you click on the three dots and it will take you to the settings on the app for your drone if you save it you can play with the maximum altitude that you want and also the distance we'll leave it on 2000 meters because that's about two kilometers and we don't plan to go four kilometers which is way too far and the auto return altitude return home altitude is very important if you live in a place where there's a lot of obstacles you want to have this value as high as possible but not too high because then your drone will go all the way up and then fall down but if you do live in a flat area you can lower it so you don't have your drone flying all the way up and then flying back down it depends on you guys uh, the update home point is very important especially if you're moving in a car or in a boat uh, you always want to update your home point so your drone doesn't fall to the water so remember that if you launch it maybe from a boat and then you land on the island update your home point you don't want your drone to land on the water because it will always land in the place where it took, took off this option is very useful to start flashing and beeping if you lose your drone just click it and it will start beeping and lighting so you can find it uh, these are the advanced safety we told you if you want to stop your emergency you can actually stop it but it will fall so don't use it when you're flying if you're close to something just lose it and also the unlock geo zone there's some restrictions so you have to ask for permission on the BGI site you will find this really map here in the left lowermost corner and it shows you some color gradients and that tells you which areas you are flying on right now where we are it's a restricted zone so we do have a, a setting for the height it doesn't allow us to fly more than that the red zone is because there's an airport there and that's the approach you cannot fly there if you try to fly the drone will not take off so do, do remember that we're indoors right now so it's not an issue but that's something that you want to take into consideration with regards to control we always use the mode position and metric units and the, f the gimbal mode is follow mode it will always keep the gimbal horizontally regardless of how the drone moves if you're using the FPV it will always point in the direction the drone is flying you can set up your calibration the stick mode is very useful it always comes on default in mode 2 if you change it depends on you guys it will change the way you fly your drone because it changed the roles the joysticks play like you will have now uh, the left hand joystick moving the drone back and forth and so on I always use the mode 2 because that's the one that I learned to fly in and it's the most common one but you can change it depending on your settings with regards to the camera I always use the 169 frame resolution because it's the best one it's, it's like cin cinematography so it's the best one to use but you can use the 4 thirds if you want it the histogram as we said is because of the white balance and also the overexposure is very important you don't want to burn your lens so they do take that into account and on the transmission we always leave it on auto it chooses the best channel for flying your drone and the about where you'll find all the data about your drone and software and sometimes so we hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, don't forget to subscribe and also follow us on drone hysteria thanks for watching enjoy your mavic mini and have a, fly, a fun and safe flight goodbye